So last week, Moscow put their nuclear weapons on high alert, and President Joe Biden said we shouldn't be worried about nuclear weapons, but should we be worried about nuclear weapons? Good question, Rob. I was born in 1961, so I have spent my entire life worried about a nuclear attack. And just like school kids today, sadly, have to do these active shooter drills, we did duck and cover drills, like our desk was going to protect us in case we were bombed by Russia. But look, before we really dive into this conversation, let's be really clear here. Experts say that a nuclear attack on the U.S. remains highly unlikely but they also agree that it's not totally out of the question. If one nuclear weapon was launched that targeted the US, it would hit its target in about just 30 minutes. Now, if the weapon was launched from the international waters just outside Boston and the East Coast, it would hit New York or Boston or Washington DC in just 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, now you have my attention. I learned about the bomb, the nuclear weapon that the U.S. used on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I mean, that killed between 129,000 and 226,000 people. Mostly civilians were killed and the cities were obliterated. It's the only time nuclear weapons have been used in armed conflict, so where do things stand now? Rob, there are treaties in place to work toward disarmament, arms control, and to keep the arms from growing across the world. These are weapons of mass destruction. And the last time Russia, which was then known as the Soviet Union or USSR, the last time they directly threatened the United States was the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962. Then President John F. Kennedy and Soviet Union Premier Nikita Khrushchev, they faced off in a tense 13-day political and military standoff over the installation of nuclear-armed Soviet missiles in Cuba, which, as you know, is just 90 miles from Florida. Well, after that confrontation, both countries agreed that the two superpowers should not get that close to mutual destruction again. Khrushchev said, quote, the two most powerful nations had been squared off against each other, each with its finger on the button. And JFK said, it's insane that two men sitting on opposite sides of the world should be able to decide to bring an end to civilization. The result was the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, the NPT, which in 1968 had the goal of preventing the nuclear weapon ranks from expanding further, and it had also the effect of leading us to the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, the CTBT, in 1996. So did the treaties actually stop countries from adding more nuclear weapons to their arsenal? Not so much. The treaties worked at prohibiting certain types of tests by the nations that signed on. And of course, the goal is to limit the spread of nuclear weapons. But right now, Rob, there are over 13,000 nuclear warheads among nine countries. And 90% of them belong to Russia and the United States. Russia has the most with 6,257. America is second with 5,550. And then the number drops dramatically. And it looks like the treaties really didn't bring a smooth relationship between Russia and America. Uh, I, I don't see it. Well, the treaties did keep the US and Russia from mutual destruction. That's why we're here talking to each other right now. But the countries were already in a period called the Cold War. And that's defined as a state of tension that didn't involve in any direct military action, but in a lot of stressful incidents that happened. The Cold War ended in 1991, only when the Soviet Union fell apart. Experts say that Russian President Putin's invasion of Ukraine has brought us to a new and possibly even longer term confrontation with Russia that will remind us a lot of the Cold War.